One, two, three incredible waterfalls. Amazing in all four seasons, but especially the fall with its colors. Clear night skies for stargazing and hiking for any age or skill level. It's no wonder this place is called the Grand Canyon of the East. This is New York's Letchworth State Park. This is Middle Falls, the tallest of the three main waterfalls found in Letchworth State Park, and probably the easiest to see, considering you can pretty much park right by it. Falling 107 feet, it looks amazing no matter the season. And on sunny days, a rainbow is pretty much guaranteed in its mist during the afternoon hours. It also looks great from Inspiration Point just up the road. But now I'm getting ahead of myself. I mean, what can I say though? These waterfalls are some of Letchworth's main attractions. And it's easy to see why. But let's get some of those pesky basics out of the way first. Just over an hour from the cities of Rochester or Buffalo, New York, Letchworth's main feature is its amazing gorge carved out by the Genesee River. It costs $10 to enter the park between the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But if you enter any other time, it's actually free. The park is closed though from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., which I found out the hard way while trying to photograph the Milky Way here one night, but more on that later. That doesn't mean you can't spend the night here. There's a large campground, cabins, and even a lodge within the park. Links in the description to book those online. Letchworth is divided into north and south sections. The north end sees a lot less traffic than the south does, but that doesn't mean that you should skip it either. The main feature on the north end is the Mount Morris Dam. A great place for a first look at the gorge, as well as for bird watching. Letchworth is known for the vultures that circle the canyon, but they're not the only birds that you can spot here, like bald eagles. And the Mount Morris Dam is a really good place if you're trying to see one of these amazing birds. There's a visitor center up here too, where you can actually book tours of the dam as well though video recording was not allowed when I visited. The main campground is found in the north part of the park too, as well as a handful of pull-offs with some scenic views, like the Gardot Overlook. But a lot of the most popular attractions are found in the southern end of the park. And speaking of overlooks, I can't think of any place to really start than my personal favorite. This is Humphrey's Overlook just past the Castile entrance to the park here, you'll want to take note of its location on the map. It's not marked by sign, but there is a pull-off along the side of the road. Letchworth, in my opinion, is a sunrise park more than it's a sunset park. And if there's one place to catch sunrise here, it's from Humphrey's Overlook. With a classic island in the sky view, the Genesee River meanders around the Great Bend Plateau in the distance. Sun rises off in the horizon, and if you're visiting on a foggy morning, you might just luck out. I say luck because I think it looks incredible. And find the gorge filled with all this amazing fog. Sun's first rays make these clouds glow. It really is a sight to see. These inversions happen more frequently in the spring and fall, and not as much in the summer. Speaking of the seasons, Humphreys looks great with the greenery of spring and summer. But the fall color really shines here. Just look at this sunrise with all that foliage. But Letchworth is a Four Seasons Park, though the road to the north side closes come winter, just before Humphreys Overlook. 
meaning it's accessible then only by snowmobile or snowshoeing. But let's keep going with a couple more overlooks worth stopping at. Just above Humphreys is the Great Bend Overlook, giving you a different perspective of the gorge and the river. And looking back towards where we just were. Then just south of Humphreys is Archery Field, where the annual Red, White, and Blue Balloon Festival is held. More on that to come too. Across from the field is yet another stunning view of Letchworth's main canyon. But I really hyped up those waterfalls. So let's start with the one that's just a little bit tougher to reach than the others. I mean, it's not that tough. But considering that the other two are short walks from the parking lot, reaching Letchworth's lower falls here is about a two mile round trip hike. Begin this one from the lower falls parking lot found here, which is off the main park road. There's a little elevation change, mainly in the form of a short staircase down to the falls main viewpoint, but nothing too extreme. Begin the trail. The vast majority of this one is wooded, following the gorge on your left. It's fairly straightforward, and you get some nice views of the river down below. Keep an eye out for this cliff and viewing area, and stone bridge down there too. This is one of the spots that we're going to be heading to on this trail. Continue on until you reach this sign and turn off. I would say this is the most difficult part of the hike. Head down this stone staircase, which leads you into even more forest. Eventually, you'll pop out in the cliff and viewing area that we saw up above. Head to the left for an awesome view of the canyon. Wonderful in the spring and summer, this area really lights up on a clear autumn morning. As for the winter, this is unfortunately a trail that's a little bit difficult to access. The turnoff from the park's main road down to the Lower Falls Trailhead closes once the snow starts falling. And while it's possible to snowshoe part of the trail, the main viewpoint of Lower Falls is closed off due to ice danger. But we're not even to Lower Falls just yet. It's right up ahead. Head forward across the viewing area where the trail continues straight and also branches off to the left and downwards. We'll come back here, don't worry. This side trail takes you down to that stone bridge and a different view of Lower Falls. But for now, we're heading to the main viewpoint, so keep going straight. You're back in the forest for just a little bit. And side note, this part of the trail is spectacular in the fall. Lots of golden yellow hues found in the leaves on the trees here. You should start hearing the falls and then the trail opens up and then finally, they come into view. Falling around 70 feet, the lower falls is actually tied with the upper falls in terms of height. These are also probably the least visited of the three main waterfalls here in Letchworth, since they do take a little bit of extra effort to get to. And by the way, I say three main waterfalls, but that doesn't mean that they're the only waterfalls found here in Letchworth. From this view, this is about as close as you can get to the lower falls, which is a little unfortunate since they're partially obscured by the cliff edge here. So to get a fuller view of the waterfall, you have three options. Demolish the cliffside, which uh, we're not doing. Get an aerial view of them by using a drone, which is an option. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Or option three, head back the way you just came for that turn off I mentioned down to the stone bridge. Make your way just a little bit down this part of the trail and then turn around you're rewarded with a really cool view of Lower Falls in the distance, framed nicely by the canyon's edges on either side. My only recommendation here, if you're looking for that perfect picture, is to bring a medium to telephoto lens with you. 
This is where I set up my cameras to do my time lapse. And while the summer looked great with all the greenery, the fall foliage down here just hit different. Look at those colors. But the trail doesn't quite end here. Continue just a little bit further ahead to go over the stone bridge. This bridge was constructed in 1935 by the Civilian Conservation Corps during the Great Depression. In fact, a lot of the bridges and trails in New York State Parks were Depression-era CCC projects, and their fantastic handiwork is still evident today. The trail continues on past the bridge for a bit, putting you on the park's east and more rugged side. It's kind of cool to get a view of the gorge from the other, less traveled side, but I didn't go too far. There was still quite a bit left to explore, and two more waterfalls to check out, back over on the main side from where we just came. So we've seen quite a bit of the gorge and the Genesee River, but you might be wondering, is there a way to hike down to the bottom? The answer is yes, and there's actually two trails that lead down there. The first is the 1.25 mile St. Helena Trail, located up here near the center of the park. The second is the one mile long Lee's Landing Trail, which actually starts from the same parking lot as Lower Falls. There's a little bit of a catch to these trails though. They're not really so much trails as they are service roads for the park's river rafting concessionaire to transport guests, guides, and gear down for river expeditions. I could be wrong, but I believe going through this concessionaire is the only way to raft or kayak the class one and two rapids found here in Letchworth. And I've provided a link in the description if this is something you're looking to book. But if you're just dying to get up close and personal with the Genesee River, pick one or both of these trails and make your way down. In my opinion, the St. Helena Trail is just a little bit more scenic heading down with some denser forest views. The gorge view, once you reach the bottom of the St. Helena Trail, is, once again, in my opinion, not as good as the one you get from Lee's Landing. But I'll let you decide based on what I'm showing you here today. As for the main part of Lee's Landing, it's pretty much just a slightly downhill walk through the forest the entire way. Once you're done down here at Lee's Landing at least, obviously head back up. If you're hungry, there's a restaurant down here in the Lower Falls parking area. Otherwise, start the drive back up to the park's main road. There are a handful of pull-offs along the way too that have some nice canyon views and are also great for bird watching. So continuing on, our next stop is the park's main visitor center. Get information here, find a gift shop full of all manner of Letchworth memorabilia, and file permits here, like for flying a drone. After that though, our next stop is the Humphreys Nature Center. A quick turn off the main road here. This building and its exhibits are fairly new, opened back in 2016. Inside are features on park plant life, wildlife, geology, and more. And there's a nice butterfly garden outside as well. I arrived too early in the day to explore the interior, unfortunately. From this area, you'll also find the Autism Nature Trail, a one mile loop that offers quieter experiences and exploration, as opposed to some of the busier parts of the park. But speaking of busy areas, it's time to head back to Middle Falls. Well, kind of. I teased Inspiration Point earlier, and it's next up along the park road here. Turn off into the parking lot and take the short walk down this paved trail. Another fantastic canyon view greets you, with Middle Falls wonderfully framed off in the distance, and the Genesee Arch train bridge just up above it. Inspiration Point seems like a fitting name for such a great view. And did I mention, this spot is open year-round. Of course, 
I'm partial to fall. Just look at all these colors. Keep your ears and eyes open while you're here too. A horn blast signals that a train is about to cross the bridge. The main viewpoint here can get a little crowded sometimes. Don't be afraid to go just a little bit further to your right up the trail. The trees are a little thicker, but there's a few clearings that give you good views of Middle Falls. You might notice that the trail continues both ways along the rim. To the right will take you all the way past Middle and Upper Falls, and pretty much out of the park. And to the left will actually take you back down to the Lower Falls area. So what gives? It's all part of the main gorge trail. Seven miles long and running from St. Helena all the way to the parking lot for the Genesee Arch Bridge above Upper Falls. And while you can't quite see Upper Falls from Inspiration Point, well, maybe just a little bit, we're going to get there. If you couldn't tell, I'm a big fan of the fall foliage found here in New York State. And at this point in our tour of Letchworth, it's probably not a bad idea to take just a little bit of a break. Just past Inspiration Point is the turnoff for Trout Pond. Tranquil and generally a little less busy than other parts of the southern end of Letchworth, it's a great spot if you brought a picnic to kick back and relax for a bit. And in the fall, this is a fantastic spot for colorful foliage. On days when it's not too windy, you get near-perfect mirror reflections in the water, too. There's also a short, one-mile loop trail around the pond and through the woods. Another opportunity to take advantage of the autumn colors. But all things peaceful must end, I suppose. Head down the main park road to what's probably the busiest part of Letchworth. This is the Glen Iris Inn, originally William P. Letchworth's vacation home. It now serves as a place for park visitors to dine, get a drink, host their wedding at, or even stay overnight. Link is in the description to book rooms or if you want to check out the restaurant's menu. The courtyard in the back is the perfect place to relax and have a beverage or some lunch. And it just so happens to have a great view of Middle Falls down below. And from up here, you can spot this lookout point that gets you an even closer view of the waterfall. So you have two options. Walk around and down the road to this spot or jump back in your car and make the drive down to the Middle and Upper Falls parking lot. From here, you can catch the Gorge Trail almost immediately, which brings you to the back view of Middle Falls first. One of the best parts of this waterfall is that it produces a spectacular rainbow in the afternoon sunlight, pretty much without fail. The pictures almost, just almost, take themselves here. Continue the gorge trail back to that lookout point, but just a heads up, you're likely to get wet from the mist here. Definitely worth it though, for these awesome views of Middle Falls. And a quick note, similar to Lower Falls, this main viewpoint also closes in the winter due to all of the ice buildup from the mist. You can still get a pretty good view from the side if you're itching for those snowy waterfall pictures though. And of course, autumn views don't disappoint from here either. Alright, so about all of these drone shots. Drone flights are actually perfectly legal in Letchworth, with a proper permit. If you're interested in flying your own drone here, I've linked the application in the description. Permits cost $50, need to be turned in at least 10 days before your flight dates, and you'll need to provide proof of general liability insurance, which is probably the biggest catch. There are some organizations that offer single-day or even hourly drone-based insurance, though. 
which I've also linked to below. I promise I'm not sponsored by them, but it might be worth it if you're really dying for some aerial shots here and you don't carry liability insurance. The other rules are no flying within 500 feet of the Mount Morris Dam or the Genesee Arch Bridge. And lastly, drone flights can only be conducted from the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So unfortunately, that means no sunset or sunrise aerial shots. And there's a good reason for that. The answer is the hot air balloons, of course. A Letchworth pastime, the park keeps the skies clear of drones so the hot air balloons can safely operate. Starting in the spring and through about early November, anyone can book a sunrise or sunset ride over Letchworth in one of these amazing hot air balloons. Balloons take passengers throughout the gorge, over the Genesee River, and the waterfalls too. Once again, the link is in the description to book a ride of your own. But they don't come cheap, at around $425 per person. It's important to note that balloon flights are extremely weather, and especially wind dependent. Any sustained winds over 7 miles an hour means that the balloons probably aren't taking off. Even if you don't opt to take a ride in one, they are really cool to watch and photograph going through the park. Balloons regularly launch from the field next to Middle Falls at sunrise and sunset, with one exception. The Red, White, and Blue Balloon Festival. generally held every Memorial Day weekend. That's whatever weekend is immediately before the last Monday in the month of May. For those of you unfamiliar, instead of launching from the field by Middle Falls, and as opposed to having only the park's balloon concessionaire launch, balloon owners and operators from all over come and launch from Archery Field, which we visited earlier. Pretty much all Memorial Day weekend at sunrise and sunset, that is, the park features a swarm of hot air balloons. And it is really something to see. This particular sunrise had so many balloons filling the gorge heading northward. Just look at them all. If you're planning on visiting in the spring, mark Memorial Day weekend on your calendars for this event. But now that leaves us just one more waterfall left to explore. And lucky for us, this one is another short walk from the same parking lot as Middle Falls, just going the opposite direction. It really takes no time at all before Upper Falls comes into view. And this one is open year round too. If you'd like a little closer view, take the trail up, where you'll eventually reach a parking lot near the top of the train bridge. Oh, and again, listen for a train approaching. It makes for a great picture. So there's really only one thing left to do here. I mean, that's not true. There's a ton more to do in Letchworth. But for the sake of this video, I have just one more thing. Stargazing. Finding clear night skies in this part of New York State can be a bit of a challenge. And I'll be honest, Letchworth does still get some light pollution, but it's not nearly as bad as it is closer to the cities. And if you are sticking around for a bit at nighttime, especially in the months of June or July, before you look up, don't forget to look straight ahead. Letchworth comes alive at night with thousands of amazing fireflies. It really is an incredible sight to see. But back to the night sky. One of the best parts is that later in the summer and into the early fall, the core of the Milky Way passes directly behind Upper Falls and the Genesee Arch Bridge. A perfect photo opportunity if there ever was one. Of course, there's that catch I mentioned earlier. The park closes at 11pm, 
and the park police, while very kind to me, did not hesitate to give me the boot when they caught me still taking pictures around midnight this past August. Right when the Milky Way lined up almost perfectly. I assumed Letchworth was open 24-7 like a lot of national parks are. But this is a state park, and that's the risk with making assumptions, I suppose. Anyways, you'll still get some good stargazing and Milky Way watching in before 11 p.m. Grand Canyon of the East indeed. And of course, not the only amazing park found in this part of New York State either. <laughs>